Good morning, everyone. I'm the PGA of America's Julius Mason. I'd like to thank you very much for joining us today at Whistling Straits for our Ryder Cup Captain's News Conference. As you get settled in, please sit back, relax, and enjoy the history, tradition, excitement, and drama that is the Ryder Cup. The 43rd edition of golf's greatest team event is only one year away now, ladies and gentlemen, and it will be played September 25 to 27 in 2020. So let's get to it and meet the captains. First, he is a three-time major champion and has won 15 times on the European Tour and on 15 other occasions around the world. Please welcome, from Dublin, Ireland, Padraig Harrington. Next, he is a 12-time winner on the PGA Tour and five-time winner on the PGA Tour champions, including two majors. Please welcome, from Madison, Wisconsin, Steve Stricker. <laughs> Captain Harrington, let's go ahead and begin with you. Good early morning and welcome to Whistling Straits here in Kohler, Wisconsin. The last time these two teams gathered, it was almost exactly one year ago today, just outside Paris at Le Golf National, where Europe beat Team USA 17 and a half to 10 and a half. In a nutshell, what worked? And can you talk about the challenges a captain might face playing an away match versus a home match? So you really want me to give you all the answers of what worked? Do we have about <laughs> plenty of time for that? Hey. You know, it was, we had a good team. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Thomas was a good captain. He was blessed with probably one of the better, the best teams we've had in terms of world rankings. Uh, there was a lot of quality in the team. They came to their, together very well. Uh, obviously, we, had, we lost on Friday morning 3-1, which was a, a big setback to us. Uh, but we had uh, some nice balance in that team. Uh, we stuck to our guns and we came through on Friday afternoon, which was, which shoot, which was huge for our team. You know, uh, that Friday afternoon session, obviously, you know, it's tough to lose one session 3-1, but to come back in the afternoon just instilled the confidence to go on with, with the plan. Uh, I think Paris National, no doubt, suited the European game, suited our style of play. Uh, so, yeah, you know, after getting the advantage back, home advantage, uh, it, it carried on from there. As you can see, I'm really trying to avoid anything that actually gives away what exactly happened behind the <laughs> scenes. Uh, but yeah, it, it was, I, I've got to say, you know, it was, a, it was really a quality team. And home match versus an away match. Oh, I, I think there's a substantial difference. It, it's, I would advocate even too much of a difference between home and away. Uh, Clearly in Europe we get to set the golf course up and we set it up every way we can to, to suit our players. And in the States we've seen that as well, uh, you know, where the, the golf courses are set up to be most advantageous for the home team. I, I think it's obviously not going to happen probably in my lifetime, but 40, 50 years down the road when the Ryder Cup is still going along, it'll probably be, it'll probably be best to have a neutral setup where there is no uh, setting up a golf course 
as we did in Europe, so that it was very tight off the tee and it, and it made it a, a real difficult, you know, where par was a good score, whereas if you went back to Hazeltine, it was more of a, a, a birdie fest, which, you know, suited the, the statisticians have got involved and tell us what suits each, each team. So, uh, yeah, possibly down the road, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be more of a neutral setup. Thankfully, here at Whistling Straits, this is a much more natural golf course. So, I'm I'm interested to see down the road what what Steve has in store. But it doesn't look like you could do a lot with this golf course. Uh, it's just a, as much as it was obviously designed and built there. It looks like it's just in a natural setting all its life, and and it's going to present its its way. Even the weather could could be very changeable the week of the Ryder Cup next year. So in many ways, this is a golf course that is, is just going to test the players on its own merits. Got it. Captain Strecker, the U.S. team didn't get the results you wanted in Paris. And on top of that, the U.S. has only won three of the last 10 Ryder Cups. Does it concern you that history really isn't on your side? Uh, yeah, it, it does concern us. and, and um but to Padraig's point there, they, they had a great team this last time in Paris. They, they outplayed us. Um, we had a difficult time with the golf course. Um, and yeah, you know, the, the, uh, the last few Ryder Cups haven't gone really the way that we have liked. But, you know, for us, it's all about, you know, for me anyways, it's about moving forward. And uh, this next team is probably going to be the first time these 12 individuals, you know, will probably have some new guys on the team. It'll be the first time these 12 individuals will be together. Uh, so it's, you know, for me, it's about moving forward, learning from the past a little bit, um, taking some of the things that um, we haven't done so well in, uh, and then trying to apply that to this next time and, and next year. And, and it's about playing better. You know, bottom line is, they they uh, they played great and they outplayed us and and um, you know we're going to have to come and be ready and uh, make the putts that we need to and hit the key shots down the stretch that we need to hit to to come out on top. Very good, Padraig. You've played on six Ryder Cup teams and you were a vice captain three times. Wearing your vice captain cap, what were you able to take away from from Paris and from Thomas's captaincy? Uh, you learn a lot more as a vice captain than you do as a player. A player, it, it's startling how, I suppose, insular we are as players. We, 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 it's all about getting your own game ready, doing what you need to do. And, and as professional golfers, we're self-managed, so it, it, it really is all about us as we go along. But when you become a vice captain, you, you, you start seeing a lot more. And, and because of that, you obviously clearly learn a lot more what's the demands of, of the players and how to fit them together and, and manage all the different uh, personalities in a team. So yeah, the, the vice captains, for me, that's, that's where you learn the most. Uh, it's nice, nice to be a player and all that, but it, it's, and I suppose when you're a player, you, you see different styles of captaincy <coughs> that you like and you don't like. And I had six different captains and, and they all had different, I had, I had a couple of captains who were very much arm around the shoulder, uh, you know, encouraging you and believing in you. I, I'd, I remember with uh, I remember with Bernard Langer, which, uh, he sat there at the at the evening uh, meeting after the first day's play, and he and his nearly the first words out of his, uh, at the at the at the meeting was, and w w it was at a boardroom table as well. And he turns around and says, "Now we'll have nobody laying up into the hazard on number five tomorrow." I was the only one who'd laid up into the hazard that day. <laughs> So yeah, Bernard was a, and Bernard would be on the tees telling you what clubs to hit into the par threes and things like that. Uh, so just there's so many different styles of captaincy. You do see that, and uh, I don't believe I'm going to be one or the other. I, I hopefully would be a mixture of, of most. Uh, but then, as as vice captain, you tend to learn a lot about the the tactics that go in behind that, and it, it is difficult. Uh, Steve would know this from be, from being there as well. It's incredibly difficult to put a team out as you know, mid morning, well, late morning on Friday, when the guys have only played maybe 14 holes of golf, and you have to put a team out for the afternoon, and sometimes you put players out who end up losing their morning match, uh, and sometimes you drop players who've won the morning match, and, and clearly you get second guessed on your team selection, but 
you know, oftentimes people don't realise those teams have to be cited, and there's so many factors that go into it that literally being the vice captain, you do get to sit there and, and be part of that decision making. Uh, and that's really what help, I, I believe that's going to help me the most as being a cap, to be a captain. Thank you. Similarly, Steve, you are a three-time Ryder Cupper and a three-time vice captain. Like Padraig, you've seen what it looks like uh, wearing a vice captain's cap as a winner and a loser. Is there a big difference between the captaincy and the vice captaincy in your mind? Yeah, I think Padraig nailed it all on the head. It, it's, uh, you learn a lot. You know, let's just put it that way. You, you get the behind-the-scenes look at at uh, what it takes to to lead a team and you watch these captains and you you pick out your favorite things or your least favorite things about every captain and you see what works with players and you it kind of shapes you as a captain I think and um, yeah you learn a lot and you learn how much there is and what goes into it and uh, it's much easier uh, being a player because you can you can just uh, worry about yourself worry about your game uh, and, and get ready for the team and get ready for your partner. Um, but when it becomes time to make some of these decisions, like you said, when you, when you got to put a team out um, in the afternoon, you know, you can see all the assistant captains and the captains, uh, you know, literally running to a corner to try to figure it out, to try to make sure that you're going to do the right thing. So um, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's an interesting job. It's a fun job. And um, you know, we look forward to it, and, and, uh, but you do, you, you learn a lot as you go along. Padre, you played in all three PGA Championships here at Whistling Straits, so you're very familiar with this venue. Um, <coughs> can you talk about what you think it might shape up as, as a Ryder Cup venue? I, I, I think it would be a great venue for the Ryder Cup. I think it's a dramatic golf course. Uh, you know, we need that in the Ryder Cup. The, the Ryder Cup's probably the most exciting golf event you know, in the game. One of the biggest sporting events, but certainly the most exciting in golf. And uh, you, know, you need a dramatic golf course that lends itself to, to spectacular play as well as some disastrous play. Uh, you know, that's what match play is about. And uh, this is the, the three PGAs I played. What mostly I remember is the variability of the golf course. You, you, uh, Weather-wise, uh, you know, a change of direction of wind can this, you know, massively change how a hole plays moving a tee box forward or back can ch change the whole character of, 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 of holes so yeah it's an ideal match play golf course I think people will will enjoy watching match play on this course I think it's it, it will it really does lend itself to that exciting play Got it. Steve Americans are 0 for 3 at PGA Championships at Whistling Straits um, do the whispers about whistling straights favoring the European team cause you any concern at all? Um, <clears throat> you're sure bringing up a lot of negatives here, Julius. But uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, uh, I got, yeah, yeah, it concerns us when we look out. And, and uh, I don't know if you brought this weather today or, or, uh, or what, but hopefully we have nice, <laughs> nice sunny 75 degree days next, next year at this time. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, you, when you look out here, it feels, it has the feel of, um, uh, does it not over there in Ireland? Does it? It, is it looks it, like an Irish day out yeah. there. Yeah. But I, the whole setting, you know, next to Lake Michigan, it looks like uh, we could be overseas somewhere for sure. But um, it looks like an Irish summer's day out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, uh, yeah, it, it, it concerns us. And, um, you know, we'll, it's a great venue. We're going to have an unbelievable support crowd here. Uh, the The atmosphere should be much like Hazeltine, uh, or even more so. the The Wisconsin people, um, you know, from what I understand, are are, are very excited uh, to have this event here. They're, it's going to be uh, it's going to be an exciting time here. And <clears throat> you know, the course is 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 uh, beautiful. It's a uh, it's our, one of our best courses in the state of Wisconsin, and to have the Kohler people here, uh, Herb's a friend of mine, David and Nina, and um, just to, uh, to be able to play it here is, is really a special treat for all of us, and uh, the state is going to show up big time, and we're going to have the crowd on our side, so hopefully that'll 
deter from what, what it really looks like, it, it, you know, out there as far as a uh, Irish setting. But, um, uh, you know, it's, we're looking forward to it. Good deal. Thank you. Padraig, take a look at this slide, which reflects European-born winners over the last year. Some names are familiar to us, some are not. But could you take a look at that and tell us what brings a smile to your face? Shane Lowry, <laughs> for sure. Uh, look, clearly we, we have a, a nice array of players winning there. There's some young players coming through. And I think Steve said it about his own team. There does feel like there's a changing of the guard coming in some ways. Uh, there's, there's a lot of young players that I have to get to know coming through. I do like the fact on the right hand side of the slide we have a solid base there that to, to work off and you you expect most of those guys to be in the team. Uh, but there will be you know three or four, five rookies in the team, new guys, fresh faces. That's just the the world of golf, what's coming through and uh, you know as I always say, the nine guys who qualified for my team, it doesn't matter who they are, if they've qualified, they've played well enough to be there, they deserve to be there. Uh, they're, they're the nine best form, informed players and we can work around those nine guys. They're, they're, they're the ones I want in the team. Uh, so it doesn't really matter until, until you get those nine guys. They are going to be the nine best players we have at that stage. So, uh, you know, you would like to fill it with the big, the old experienced guys there on the right hand side. But you're, you're comfortable with the younger guys also coming into the team. So speaking of your team, you're only two weeks into the European point standings, as you can see on this next screen popping up here. Um, any thoughts, any surprises as you look at this? The surprises I'm looking at, and I have looked at it, you know, I told myself, just don't look at the points and things. <laughs> like it's, it's a full year away, and as vice captain, again, the experience you get as vice captain, you, you, you start to get involved in the in looking at players and what the captain is feeling. And during the course of the, the last three months, you pick a new team every week if you're looking at it. So this is very early doors. Yes, I have looked at it. I said I wouldn't and I will continue to look at it and people will continue to remind me of it. Uh, but, you know, as I said, if any of these players, and you know, like Victor Perez there is a young guy just starting off, uh, he's right up there, if he qualifies, if he holds on to that position for the, the next 12 months, he really deserves to be there. That's, a, that's a going to be a quality performance because the pressure is on him. So I'm happy with any rookie who makes it into my team. They, 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 you know, they're the ones, especially at this stage, if they, if they do it for a full year, it, it means they have the experience of handling the pressure and you're, you're going to be looking forward to that type of player making the team. But the fact of the matter is when you, you know, we have statisticians and they tell us who's got what chance of making the team and it's it's amazing it's a pretty slim chance for most people in in the end of the day because only nine people qualify automatically so even even for good players it's you know for a lot of good players it's it's down to you know maybe a one in 20 chance a one in 10 chance of making the team so uh, this will change over time but uh, i'm comfortable with a few rookies making my team for sure thank you Steve, same question. As you can see, here's a list of winners over the past year from US-born players. I'm kind of guessing you like the way the majors played out this year. Yeah, you know, again, it's, it's uh, so early in, in the deal. Uh, we, we're a year away, you know, 11 months away from making our picks and the guys finalized on the team. And, um, but yeah, you got some great, um, great younger players that have starting to prove themselves like a Patrick Cantley and you know watching Cameron Champ do what he did this last week uh, was really impressive down the stretch uh, that last hole and um, yeah you know and we're gonna have the the mainstays I'm sure as well you know the Dustin Johnson's the Kepka, uh, you know Ricky Fowler um, Xander Shoffley you know who's been playing really well so uh, again, you just keep looking at it. You know, you look at it. I get those emails from you on a, a weekly basis to show me the uh, the uh, point system and and how everybody's playing. And but I I love watching golf. I love watching the guys uh, compete. And so I I'll uh, keep a good eye on everybody and see how they're playing. And to Padraig's point, you know, if, if they make in make it in the top eight, they deserve to be there. And and then it's up to us to to. Um, 
to pick those last four guys. And, and here you see that list there too. You know, Tony Finau pulling up the eighth spot and um, Gary Woodland had a great year. Webb Simpson's been really steady. And, um, you know, obviously Tiger's been right in there and, and coming off with knee surgery. So, you know, anticipation for him to play well and keep keep coming back is, is all interesting for all of us to watch and see how he does. And, um, you know, Kisner, another good match play guy. So there's a lot of good names on that list. And uh, Justin Thomas down there, you expect him and Patrick Reed. I mean, you look up and down that list, there's a lot of a lot of great names there with a lot of experience that we'd love to have on the team. Steve, Patrick, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we're happy to go to Q&A right now. If you do have a question, please raise your hand high and wave down a couple of wireless microphones that are floating around out there. If we can get a microphone over here in the aisle. Ready to go. Steve, uh, just can you talk about the broader implications of hosting this event here in Wisconsin, even outside of golf, as a great Wisconsin native, what, what it means to, to you as a native here and to, to this state to be able to host an event of this magnitude? Yeah, I mean, it first started off as major championships, right? You know, we've had the PGA here three times. We had uh, the U.S. Open over at Aaron Hills, and, and this is the ultimate here uh, to have really the ultimate um, event in the game of golf. Uh, to be here at Whistling Straits in Wisconsin. Um, you know, it's just really, from everybody I talk to, the anticipation, the excitement level is through the roof. And, and it's no different for me either. You know, I'm very excited to, to have this opportunity to, to be here in my home state to try to help this team and lead this team to, uh, to try to win that cup back. And um, yeah, it's a great treat for all of us. And uh, I know the colder people, um, will will uh, treat us unbelievably they already have and uh, we look forward to uh, to being here and getting the ball rolling you know it, it'll be here before we know it but we're all uh, we're all super excited question over here uh, this question is for Patrick um, I think one of the first big decisions you had to make was how many captains picks your team would have uh, and you chose to go down from four to three which in theory, uh, could prevent you from taking some veteran uh, when you make your picks uh, the way Thomas did in Paris. And I was just curious to hear uh, the logic behind that choice. Uh, the, the logic is basically you, anybody you pick is under pressure. More pressure, more stress than a player who is qualified. So I wanted, the way I looked at it is the ninth guy, how often would you skip the ninth guy in the rankings and pick four people after him? Uh, not very often. It's not something that you would probably do. You'd, you'd normally pick the ninth guy and, and why pick him and put him under pressure? Why not just let him qualify into the team, let him feel like he's there on his own merits, no second guessing, no judging? Uh, that would be my thought on it. Question right over here, please. If both of you could talk to being your rookie experiences when you were first on a team and what that is like and what you can bring to rookies who are going to be on this team, because obviously both of these teams are going to have some rookies on them. Steve, you want to hit that first? Yeah, my rookie experience was uh, at Valhalla 2008. Uh, Paul Azinger was the captain. Um, we went on to win there. Uh, it, was, it was a great experience. Paul did a, a wonderful job. Uh, you know, I learned a lot from, you know, looking back at it today, I, I learned a lot from what he did there. And, um, you know, he uh, came up with a system that we, we bought into and, and um, he was a really good captain. The players, the fans uh, responded to the fans there that week. The, the crowds there at Valhalla were unbelievable. And, um, yeah, it's a nerve wracking time. I, I'm sure you're your rookie time on the Ryder Cup too is is uh, is a nervous time. You don't know what to expect. You don't. You're playing for your country. Um, you know, probably the most nervous I've ever been playing the game of golf was when you're you're playing that that first Ryder Cup. So, you uh, you remember it. You uh, look back at it. Um, at during the time, you're like, how? Oh, why do I want to do this? You know, it's not. It's so nerve wracking that it's not fun. But after it's done and. And after it's all over with, you're like, that was fun. You know, let's, let's, you know it drives you to make that team again and, and um, keeps you going to want to be on these teams. 
yeah, my rookie experience would be 99 in Brookline. Uh, still goes down as probably the most electrifying week I've ever had in a golf course. I can't say, it was just so exciting, the, the atmosphere, the buzz of it. It was quite a contentious one in Brookline, uh, but it was in Boston, so I had a lot of Irish support, so uh, it was fantastic for me. I, I only just qualified in the previous two weeks by finishing second and second, the whole of putt to get into it. I was playing great. Just everything about that Ryder Cup of Bar, the result was was just spectacular. I actually, on the Sunday, I beat Mark Amira and it looked like I'd won the Ryder Cup at that stage because uh, Jose was five up or something like that. So once we had that point in the bag, which I kind of, I wasn't obviously following the leaderboards, I assumed that. So I uh, literally, I did an interview in the back of 18 thinking I got the winning point and I maybe five minutes later and it was literally five minutes later I'm sitting just about to sit down or like just sat down on the 17 green when Justin Leonard hold that putt and it was all taken away so the highs and lows were exceptional you'd never see it in any other uh, event like it uh, and that's why we love the Ryder Cup I think that's why people uh, not just golf fans love the Ryder Cup I think that's why sports fans love the Ryder Cup it's it's dramatic it's exciting it, it goes the ebbs and flows in it, there, there's just nothing quite like it. You get to root for your home country, your home continent. Uh, really, it's, it, it's spectacular. And you know, once you play one, you'd never want to miss out on another one. Uh, and, and I had some great experiences afterwards. Some, you know, we had a lovely Ryder Cup in 2006 when we won in Ireland because it was in my home state. A bit like Steve going this year. You know, I, I, like the Irish one was really nice because we won we won comfortably in the end of the day. I, I prefer the ones that are tight and there's a bit more excitement in it. Uh, so what I think you find every time you play a Ryder Cup is it throws up something dramatic and exciting. It, it really is. It never ceases to keep giving. Very good. Question? Steve, we're used to you being pretty stoic uh, on the golf course right over here, Steve. Uh, you're, we're used to you being pretty stoic on the golf course, but on the hype video, we saw a couple of fist pumps uh, there out of you. Will we see that guy again? Who is that guy? Uh, I think I pulled a hamstring on one of those, so <laughs> I don't know if I can do that again anymore. But, uh, you know, I don't know. You know, this, this, uh, this event, um, it brings out some crazy emotions you know, in, in you and as a player and even as an assistant captain when I've been a part of some of these teams. So, yeah, it's hard to say, especially here in my home state. And, and um, but, you know, I, I try to keep it under the radar and low key, but uh, you never know. But um, it, we're sure looking forward to it. It's, it's uh, the eight or nine months since they announced me as captain has flown by, and I'm sure this next year will fly by too, and we'll be here before we know it. Very good. Question over here, please. Uh, Steve, uh, yeah, you, as you just said, it's been about eight months since they announced you in Milwaukee. Can you tell us what the first eight months have been like? What have you done to s sort of start the preparations for next year? And maybe Padre can address that as well since he's been named. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's not, it hasn't been too overwhelming to start with. You know, a lot of little things, you know, um, designing bags, you know, looking at clothes. We come, we've come up here a couple of times. Um, it's just uh, the constant, you know, thinking about it really, which is which is really cool and neat for me is trying to come up with uh, ways to make sure that I have everything ready, you know, and and have the team engaged and um, you, you know you just try to think about every little thing that you can do and and make it a special week for these players because it is a special week. It's. It's a week out of the year that if you make the team, it, it's, uh, it, it means a lot. You know, you build some great relationships during the week. Uh, the team camaraderie is, um, is unbelievable. It's just one of those weeks that you want to be a part of and, and you want to make sure that uh, I do everything that I can do to, to make sure that those guys have a great week. So, um, you know, it's just the constant thinking about it, and, and now, you know, we're a year out, and now it becomes more about, you know, who's, who, who are we looking at to play? You know, what, what, what's the team going to look like? Um, but, yeah, it's, it's been fun, constantly trying to think about it and take things from other captains, other 
other assistant captains, uh, talked to a ton of people. I've been just gathering a lot of information and, and um, uh, going from there. Patrick? Yeah, I, I, quite a bit of administration stuff over the last uh, number of months, just like Steve, uh, golf bags, clothing. Uh, I've come in here to look at the team rooms, the bedrooms, pick, uh, you'd be amazed at detail that goes in behind the scenes and the little details. Uh, keeps you pretty busy. Uh, kind of have to manage that if, you're, if I'm, I'm still playing, so you kind of have to manage your time well. I kind of have the feeling now that we kind of turn a corner uh, soon, that obviously a lot of the administration stuff needs to be done a year in advance. Uh, you know, when it comes to designing clothes and making the clothes, they need time. Uh, from now on, it, I would think it's going to turn more to my time with the team, my time getting, you know, getting to know the players and, and understanding what's going on. So it would be much more, I'm hoping from now on, it'll be much more of the, of what people perceived of the captain's job is, of, of just, you know, watching his players, getting an understanding, getting a feel for, uh, what my captaincy, how I want my captaincy, what I want it to be like. Uh, and, and, you know, from now on, it, it's, it's going to get more into, the, into the, the real Ryder Cup stuff, the stuff that I would be certainly more interested in and, and the stuff that I'm, you know, will hopefully make me a better captain when it comes around to the, the event in a year's time. Thank you. Front row, Gary. <clears throat> Both of you guys have talked about the golf course. Steve, I think it's no secret that <clears throat> you'd like to take some of the things at Hazeltine and bring them here. How do you do that on this course because it's so different than Hazeltine? Yeah, good question, Gary. It's, it's, um, Tell us. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, th there's no real tricks. You know, I mean, they know how we like to set up the golf courses and we know how they like to set up the golf courses. And, and they're, you know, I'm sure what he's got envisioned in his mind uh, is going to be the way it's going to be. And, <laughs> and I know the next time when we go, we go, uh, where do we go next time? Rome. Rome, yeah. And I'm sure it'll be much like Paris. So, um, yeah, there's no real tricks here. You know, it, it, it's not going to be eight on the stimp meter like it was in Paris. It's, uh, it's not going to be as high as rough as it was in Paris. Um, but you know, it, it's there's no there's no real tricks, you know, and and but it is a little bit more of a challenge here. To Padraig's point earlier, that you know it's a link style course, but I don't know if this is a true link style course. You know, a lot of this um, is still played through the air here. Um, you know, some of the link style that I've played over on over the years overseas is that you know you really bounce the ball up, you roll it up, you can flight it down low and. And here, I think it's a little bit more in the air than it is over overseas, um, personally thinking. But um, yeah, we'll um, we'll see how it goes. Didn't give much, did he? <laughs> <laughs> um, Martin, in the back over here, please. Steve, when you were talking earlier about your mainstays in the team, you didn't mention either Phil Mickelson or Tiger Woods. Was that a case of you possibly hinting subconsciously that they may have a, a different role here rather than a playing role? No, I think I mentioned Tiger. Uh, Phil, I know I didn't mention, but um, not not by, um, it's just that I went over my head, I guess. But uh, uh, no, not at all. I, I think they both are very capable of making the team. Um, you know, Tiger probably will make his own team this year in the, in the President's Cup. He's, he's played well again. And um, it doesn't surprise me either one of those guys were to make this team next year. And um, it looks like Phil is building up his calves and, and getting thinner and hitting more bombs. So it, uh, anything's possible with Phil and, and Tiger. We know what kind of player and competitor he is. So um, no, I didn't mean to leave anybody out. Uh, but it, it, um, it, like I said, it wouldn't surprise me if either one of those guys, and we welcome that. As, as a team, uh, they are both unbelievable in the team room. Um, they're, they're obviously played on a number of teams and have had so much um, experience. Uh, but to leave any of those guys out would be, would be hard to do just because of what they mean and what they have meant to these teams over the years. Question over here, please. Uh, yeah, this question's for Padraig. Uh, what are the, in your experience, what are the challenges of being 
the visiting captain and maybe what about your personality kind of suits you for, for putting together a team to come to the United States? I suppose it's a different challenge to being a home captain. There's no doubt when you're the home captain, you, 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 a lot of your captaincy is setting up the golf course and, and, and the challenge that everybody's going to get. You, you get to make a lot of choices when you're the home captain. As the away captain, you, you are presented with a lot of, presented with certain options that the only options. So uh, mostly about my captaincy would be just managing my team, uh, the nine players and then the, the three captains picks. Uh, when I have that team, it's, it's putting them together in the, in the right format for foursomes and four ball. It's hopefully managing their expectations during the week uh, for what they're going to see and what they're going to, you know, how the event will, uh, you know, how it will, uh, the ebbs and flows of the event. And, and, and you know, that would probably be more with rookies than the senior players. They've been here before, they've seen it before. But even then, I, I, I'd be the sort of person, I'd be more of, the Bernard Langer style of captaincy than the warm and fuzzy Ian Woosnam style of captaincy or Sam Torrance. I wouldn't be the guy, I, I will try and be the guy to put the arm around the shoulder, but I would definitely be more on the Bernard Langer style of, of being practical uh, and, and try and be organized and, and give the guys as much help as I can. Uh, you know, outside of that, I, just like Steve said, you, you try and pick up from all the captains over the years the good and the bad and, and try and develop the good and, and, and there won't be too much, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel here, there's not going to be too many, uh, I, I don't have new ideas that are going to come in and, and revolutionise how we captain a team or a European team, it's going to try and be more of the same and, and present uh, you know, all the options to my players so that they're, they're in the best possible position to play their, their, their own game and their best game. Question over here, please. Uh, question for both. Uh, I'm wondering if you can take a trip down memory lane and think about the first Ryder Cup you remember as kids, uh, maybe the first one you watched or the first big moment that you can remember. Steve? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yeah, I guess the one that uh, really sticks out in my mind is is uh, the winning putt of, of Davis Love. And where was that at when he raised his arms? Uh, uh, Belfry, 93. Belfry. What year? 93. I'm sure I watched him before then. Um, but that one just really sticks out in my memory, uh, you know, being in a way match and a tight match. and. Um, you know, just an iconic, really kind of picture when he made that winning putt and, and raised his arms. And you could, you know, knowing, knowing Davis now, you, you know what that, what that meant and what that feels like. So, um, you know, I, I still remember that and still look at it. And it, it's in a lot of our team rooms, pictures and all that throughout the years. So it's uh, probably the one that sticks in my mind the most. I think for me personally, I grew up as an amateur playing, we used to play our winter series of golf a lot in a golf course called Royal Dublin, which is the home of Christy O'Connor Sr. So he had, at that stage, had played the most Ryder Cups in Ryder Cup history. I think it was nine. And his golf bags are obviously in the memorabilia cabinets and things there. So I grew up with the Ryder Cup being very much in, in the forefront of golf in Ireland. And then, uh, Obviously, Chris O'Connor Jr. hit that two iron in 85 would probably be the first shot. I probably saw shots before that, but 85 would have been, that was the one for me uh, against Fred Couples. Then quickly followed by Eamon Darcy, another Irish pro holding the putt at Muirfield Village. Hold like a six footer down, well, maybe a four footer down the hill and 18 at Muirfield. Like Eamon would not have been the most beautiful putter to hold a putt like that in the Ryder Cup. Uh, Philip Walton then winning the 95. Uh, Holland, you know, had two, took two down the last. So there was a lot, of, really being a great Irish heritage in, in, the, in the Ryder Cup, and that's something that I would have been brought up with. Uh, so those are, the, those are the standout memories for me. Yeah. Question? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is for Steve. Um, over the last few Ryder Cups, there's been some um, evaluation, I guess, of the American team and their ability to play match play as compared to the proficiency of the European team. As a coach, especially with the young guys, 
well, as you're approaching this, what would you do to work with their mindset to move to match play versus stroke play that they're used to week after week? Um, yeah, and, and I, don't, I don't know if we're weak in that department. I, I think, you know, the, um, the Europeans have outplayed us the last, the last few times. Um, we, we get a lot of practice at it. You know, we play a President's Cup every other year and we play this event. Um, we also have the World Golf Championship match play event. Um, you know, maybe if anything, uh, you know, we've been looking into stats as well. You know, I mean, we, we do the same thing as the European side and it's, you know, we gave a lot of holes away in, in France um, by making something other than par. And uh, we made as, almost as many birdies, if I remember right, during that week in France, but we just gave so many holes away and in, in, um, in making different numbers, you know. So it, it could be our style of play, you know. Our guys on the, on the U.S. side are, are aggressive players. They, they make a lot of birdies. Um, usually the guys that make the team are leading the, the birdie average for the year, you know. They're, they're just uh, aggressive players. And, you know, sometimes in match play, it's okay to back down and, and try to make a par, and, and uh, that showed in France, um, you know, that if we could have just made some pars, that it could have been a different match, but uh, that's easier said than done, too. You know, France was a tough setup. Uh, the course was very demanding, very difficult. Our guys didn't have any experience on that golf course, so, um, yeah, so I think if anything, you know, the message for our guys would be, you know, you, uh, sometimes, you know, backing off and making pars and making making the other team earn it is is a good thing and and uh, wear them out a little bit. But um, yeah, it's I don't. It's a tough question. It's uh, you got to hold putts. You know, bottom line is you make more putts than the other team and you're going to win. But um, hopefully, we can do that. Thank you. Questions. Questions from media twice. Uh, Padraig, Steve, thank you very much for thank joining you. us. Uh